The first topic I'll be talking to you about today are advanced energy technologies. The world uses a massive amount of energy at present, over 156 billion megawatt hours every year. This is about 26 times the annual oil output of Saudi Arabia. And this number is expected to grow by over 50% between now and 2040. This massive growth is fueling increasing uncertainty over the future of our global energy usage. But today, I'll talk to you about a few technologies that will alleviate these concerns and will allow us to reliably meet our future energy targets. The first example is solar power. In 2014, solar comprises less than 1% of global energy production, so it doesn't seem like such a big deal. However, if we look back over the last decade, we see that the global use of solar has been rising exponentially. Because this trend is expected to continue into the near future, it's anticipated that solar will become the largest single source of global energy production by 2050. One of the major drivers behind this trend has been the precipitous drop in prices of photovoltaic modules, down from about $77 per watt in 1977 to just 36 cents per watt at present. By 2016, it's expected that all 50 states in the U.S. will have achieved grid parity. Now, these numbers are just for traditional inorganic solar cells, but there are even newer technologies that will make solar more affordable and accessible. For example, organic photovoltaic cells, also known as plastic solar cells. One prominent example comes from the National Physical Laboratory in the United Kingdom, where scientists have recently demonstrated 3D printed solar cells that work best when it's cloudy outside. Because these cells are so cheap to manufacture and are easily customizable, it's expected that we'll see widespread commercial uptake of them within the next five years. Now imagine if you could have a completely invisible, unobtrusive solar cell. This is in fact already a reality. The startup Ubiquitous Energy has come out with a film coating that can be applied to any glass surface to generate electricity sort of in the same way that we already apply coatings to our windows to cut down on climate control costs. Although these, uh, although these transparent solar cells are less efficient than traditional silicon cells, they could be put into all sorts of new places because you don't even know they're there. So if you consider that about two thirds of the surface area of a skyscraper is made of glass, you could coat every window in a high-rise office building and in this way generate over a quarter of your building's electricity just from solar windows. One of the major barriers to the widespread uptake of renewable energy resources has traditionally been the discrepancy between the times that the energy is generated and the times that people actually want to use it. One way to address this issue is through advanced energy storage and recapture technologies. Light cell energy has demonstrated a technology that can capture thermal energy from compressed air, which would otherwise go to waste. So how this works is during off-peak hours, the device charges, and during on-peak hours, it discharges either back into the electric grid or into the building's heating system with over 90% round trip thermal efficiency. Light cell has already raised over, 90, over $37 million and they are expecting that their next generation product will become the first energy storage system that can outcompete gas peaker plants. An alternative approach is the distributed storage of electricity in electric vehicles. Scientists at the University of Delaware have teamed up with a local electricity utility in a pilot program where they outfitted nine Mini Coopers with two-way electric chargers and hooked them up to the grid in a sort of mini power plant. So um, the battery of each car is charged during off-peak hours and then discharges back into the grid during on-peak hours uh, assuming that wouldn't deplete the car's battery. Because each of these vehicles can put out the average draw of 10 houses, um, scientists estimate that 
they could generate over $100 per month of profits per car, which would easily uh, allow this technology to pay for itself. So far, I've, uh, I've focused on solar energy, generating power by capturing um, solar power. But what if we could tap into the same source of energy as the sun itself? This is the promise of nuclear fusion, which has long been thought something we wouldn't see in our lifetimes. But recently, Lockheed Martin announced a compact so-called high beta fusion reactor. They are anticipating to have a prototype by 2017 and a fully functional power plant by 2022. Because this design is so compact, just about two by four meters, and uses raw input materials that are cheap, widely available, and safe, it would find a widespread uptake for distributed power generation in developing nations, meaning that these high beta fusion reactors can meet baseload global electricity demand in three decades. The combination of uh, technologies that I've talked to you about in today's webinar and others which you will find in the report will change the way we think about and use our energy resources in coming years. We should expect to see a transition away from the 20th century model of the electric grid that was dominated by large centralized utilities towards a network of an independent, clean, local uh, generators of energy, uh, in essence, a democratization of our energy resources. So what you've seen here are disruptive technologies that we have identified as having real commercial potential. These are not pipe dreams. There are real startups and inventors working on ideas as disruptive as the internet has been in decades past. If any of these technologies have been of particular interest, we'd be happy to chat with you about how we might be able to work to explore some of these technologies. In fact, what you've seen here is a sample of Prescatter's service. Typically, clients provide us with a statement of work. In this particular case, we have broadly looked at nine disruptive technologies. In the second step, our team has a teleconference similar to this webinar, but where we would have interactive discussions with you and your teammates on the findings. And then in the last step, we compile our findings into a report for you and your teammates to disseminate internally.